Hi Bio 111 students and uh, today we're making a video, uh, it's a recap of everything that we learned about Mendelian inheritance and uh, human genetics. Um, so um, we're going to start off by giving a few uh, definitions. So alleles, we talk a lot about alleles. Um, they are members of a gene pair that influence a trait. Um, well, we could say uh, characteristics or trait. Let's use the word characteristics. Um, they are found found on the same location location or we could say lo locus or loci for plural um, on homologous chromosomes. And homologous chromosomes, uh, we see that uh, during um, prophase, those uh, chromosomes start to condense out of the nucleus and become visible. And uh, what we begin to see happen is uh, the lining up of homologous chromosomes. So um, that uh, the chromosomes that code for very similar things uh, end up getting together. And that's what we refer to when we talk about homologous chromosomes. Um, so uh, another thing we're going to talk about today is um, some of the things, not everything is a heritable trait, so sometimes we have a non-heritable trait, and that is something that we would like to emphasize, that there are traits, such as your hairstyle for instance, that are not heritable traits at all, because those are choices that uh, you make yourself. So um, let's define something that I was talking about last day in class, which is do not mix up phenotype and genotype. Phenotype is the appearance Or what's being coded for? You know, like the blood type, it's A or B or O or AB, um, but uh, it's not going to be AA plus or BO plus. It's not going to be any combination of letters. It's going to be usually the appearance. So for instance, a wrinkled seed, that's a phenotype. This. It's not a phenotype, that's a genotype. Genotypes are letters. So whenever you're asked a question about a phenotype, you're looking for the results of the genotype combinations. So, uh, dihybrid gamete. So gametes, as we know, are haploid, so they have one set of uh, one set of one out of a set of 23 chromosomes in a human being they have one set of chromosomes they don't have the two sets so as a result um, they will have half what an adult would have so if the adult looks like this phenotypically then now this is a dihybrid adult because it has H and B. The gamete from that would be, or it could be 
or it could be or some other combination of those but those are dihybrid gametes okay so it's going to be two letters not four letters that's apparent so a dihybrid gamete So, um, we're talking about uh, phenotype is the appearance, it could be hair colour, it could be something like that. Um, know that colour blindness in humans is X-linked. And we'll be talking a little bit more about this earlier, or later in this lecture. Uh, Colour blindness is sex or X linked, and the reason why they call it sex linked is because it crops up more often in males because the male only has one X chromosome. Um, so uh, we want to know what the term heterozygote and homozygote means. Hetero, different, homo, same. So a heterozygote. A person that's heterozygous, they'll have a set of genes that look like this. And homozygous can be or B, B for the same trait. Um, so uh, let's talk about a different pattern of uh, dominance. What we've seen so far is something like this, or this, or this. We see recessive, we see homozygous dominant, we see heterozygous. Uh, we're talking about complete dominance in those cases. So complete dominance and uh, there's other types of dominance too there's incomplete dominance and we saw that with our lab when we were talking about snapdragon and if you remember we had red snapdragons and white snapdragons and we didn't change the size of the letters because they are co-dominant um, or they're they're incomplete dominant and uh, incomplete dominance means that the combination of red and white produced pink. If the combination of red and white produced red, that would be complete dominance. If the or, or white, that would be complete dominance. But incomplete dominance is when they work together to produce something, um, a different uh, uh, phenotype than either of them. So that would be an incomplete dominance. So um, the carrier for a gene, let's say we talked about this gene here, this um, person would be considered a heterozygous female. A heterozygous carrier female. And the word carrier means that this individual is unaffected. It's an unaffected individual but it does carry the gene for color blindness. So, so um, recessive alleles. So we have B, 
and B, well the effect of this one, because looking at it we see So phenotype black, it could be this or this. So we call this the recessive gene. Um, we see effect is masked. And that's a term that you'll see. Masked or hidden so that we can't see it. And so we just see a black flower or whatever we see. So if this is a parent then a gamete of this parent could be or There are two possible gametes of those parents. Um, so the gamete is the one letter version of what the parents are. When you see two letters, that's a parent or it's an individual offspring. So um, let's say they use words uh, like heterozygous, dominant, homozygous, recessive. These are the things that you should start seeing. Heterozygous dominant, you should start seeing something like this in your mind. Homozygous recessive, well, actually, I'll have to say all recessive phenotypes are homozygous. So that tells you right away that you're looking at something like Let's say these two guys mated. So what would the offspring be like? Well, we would have possible gametes from this guy are AA and the possible gametes from this person are A and A. And so we would get A, 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 A. And so basically what we end up with is one half a a one half small a small a or one to one ratio or 50 50 so that depends if you're asked the ratio or if you're asked um, the percentage or if you're asked the uh, proportions So, um, let's say we have uh, this situation where we have, uh, let's say short is uh, the, the recessive condition and two short plants are mated together. So, all offspring, as you can tell right away, are going to be, um, all the offspring are going to be the exact same uh, genotype as their parent. So they will be short in phenotype. So, um, okay, so we have a situation here where, uh, let's say in ogres, uh, we can go into mythical beasts too. Uh, T is two headed. T is one headed and uh, we got brown eyes dominant and let's say we have red eyes so when we're asked this is a word problem we would be told that a two headed male ogre uh, with red eyes and he uh, ma mates with a one-headed female ogre
Oh, we're also told he's homozygous for his uh, two heads. And that she, we know where it because she's two headed, we know that, or one headed, we know that uh, it's going to be small t, small t. And uh, that she is heterozygous for uh, her uh, brown eyes. So we have to work out the combinations of uh, gametes that these these individuals can produce, and basically here we can only get capital T, lowercase b, and in this situation we can have these combinations of gametes. So um, that gives us offspring. Uh, let's see, put this here. Our offspring are going to be and well, they're the exact same. Uh, no, they're not. So we're going to have fifty percent. Um, fifty percent red eyes and fifty percent uh, brown eyes, and they are all going to be uh, two-headed. So we have uh, one hundred percent two-headed, fifty percent brown, fifty percent red. And so you would say you have fifty percent two headed red eyes, fifty percent two headed brown eyes. So let's say we have the same ogres and uh and we're just told about their offspring and their offspring are H for air hairy. Um, little h for not. And if we're given a, a, a word problem like this, it's a good idea to write this down on the side. Um, for for exams in this class, you are provided with some. You uh, you get some scratch paper. You're allowed to have that piece of scratch paper, and even on honor lock, you can actually show that piece of scratch paper um, to the screen before, before and after. Just show it by either side of it and uh, it sh just uh, shows uh, what you were writing and it shows that you didn't come into the exam with writing on the piece of paper which obviously could be a problem. Um, so we have hairy, not hairy and uh, we have brown eyes and red eyes. So if the offspring look like a hairy brown eyed uh, hairy brown eyed parent or hairy brown eyed offspring so that is H blank B blank because we don't know. Um, this could be uh, heterozygous because uh, those are two dominant traits. And we find out also that the other offspring is not hairy. So because that is a recessive that tells us it's going to be double H and but also has brown eyes. So from that information, we get that 100% of the offspring have brown eyes, and that uh, it's 50-50 for hairy and uh, uh, not hairy. So, uh, so what we've got is uh, parents that are likely 
going to be HH because we have this and that and uh, because there is no evidence of a small b showing up in the offspring and because of that uh, the parents could be HHBB like this or possibly they could be Well, it actually couldn't be. It would have to be HH again, because again, we don't see we we see this guy. So there is a recessive possibility here for for the hairiness, and um, uh, we uh, there isn't a recessive possibility here. So we could assume that both parents are like this, or we could um, say that. Uh, the parents could be that and this as possibilities. But either way, what we want to make sure is that um, our genes line up. So, uh, when we're writing out uh, the genotypes, uh, we should always write down um, uh, for instance we have our, our two-headed uh, non-hairy ogre so and we're told he's uh, heterozygous for the two-headedness so that tells you that he's T T and he's not hairy that tells you he's that and um, uh, basically that would be if you were given the information uh, what is the genotype of a two-headed non-hairy ogre given the letters that you were given so now we are going to talk about uh, the black labs um, uh, the black lab and the chocolate lab um, and they want to um, uh, have all three colors of pop. This is the uh, problem that we had, and uh, the answers in that case were that if you were gonna have all three colors of pop, you would have to have something that goes DD for the yellow, BB, blank, blank, for this guy, and B, blank uh, B as well of course because that is a deposit deposited uh, D blank here so that tells you that the parents have got to have this they've got to have that they've got to have this and they've got to have that and if you cross those you can get those combinations of yellow, black, and brown. So, if you wanted to get black or yellow offspring only, then this guy makes no appearance. So in that case, that opens up a few other possibilities. So, we don't necessarily have to have these genes in here because the yellow lab could be and the black lab could be so we could have as a possible combination that combination will not give you browns ever but it will give you yellow and black Labradors. So, um, the phenotype and the genotype don't mix them up, but one of the things we need to realize is that a dominant phenotype can have two different forms 
of genotype. So the dominant phenotype for black that we just saw earlier in the Labradors, it either looks like this, genotype, genotype is B, B, or B, B. This is a question that came up um, that quite a few of you uh, seem to get a little mixed up with. Um, an autosomal gene like this, we have um, uh, two possibilities for genotype when we're given the information that it is a dominant phenotype. Phenotype is the appearance. So the dominant phenotype of black coat, because that's what it would be. The po two possible explanations are those genotypes. So incomplete dominance. So let's say we have um, a dog with long hair and a dog with short hair that was the same kind of dog and they get together and uh, the pup is medium haired. Well, this is very much like the situation that we had with the red snapdragon and the white snapdragon. It's halfway between the two, and this would be a situation called incomplete dominance. So, we could go like this. So the medium haired ones, their genotype might be this. Call that incomplete dominance because neither one of them are really dominant over the other one. So to be more correct, we might say this. I'm medium haired with a part of this. So, um, uh, we're talking about left-handedness and uh, other traits in class. So, um, here we have uh, a blue-eyed left-handed. If brown eyes were dominant, so B equals blue, and in handedness, right hand, is dominant over left. Righty, lefty. So, we, we're told that a blue-eyed, left-handed man or a woman, blue-eyed, so we got B, B, and left-handed, so this is a recessive individual all the way around, and they are uh, uh, with a completely heterozygous um, uh, partner. And uh, what will the offspring be? Well, again, you have to get out all of your uh, gametes. So this would be for this person, BR is their only option, uh, but this guy, they got a couple options here, so you could have this, you could have this, you could have this, and you could also have this. And so you go ahead, you make your Punnett square, and uh, there's four phenotypes possible. Uh, and uh, actually four uh, genotypes. So uh, the four genotypes possible are B, B,
So what we can get from that is uh, a brown. Uh, a uh, brown-eyed righty, a brown-eyed lefty, a um, uh, blue-eyed righty, and a blue-eyed lefty. So we have four phenotype possibilities there. And uh, you could be asked, uh, what are the number of phenotypes that are possible in this situation? And by doing a quick Punnett square like this on your scrap paper, you'll figure out very quickly that there are four. And one of the things to don't get mixed up again between genotypes and phenotypes. Yes, there are four genotypes, but you actually have to do the process of working out what would they look like. And that way uh, you go, okay, well, this is what they'd look like. So they are indeed four different phenotypes. Um, So we have uh, an incomplete dominant situation where this is uh, white W equals white Um, equals brown and we're told that WB equals blue. So it's an incomplete dominant situation. So what happens if a white and a blue were to get together? And what we end up with is a situation where uh, you're going to end up with 50% uh, are going to be white and 50% blue. So it's going to be the same genotypes uh, again and the same phenotypes again the phenotypes are white and blue. It's very important that when we're talking about traits um, where uh, one is dominant and the other one is recessive, that for the same trait we use the same letter. Uh, so, for instance, um, for the handedness, we didn't go or is for right handed and L is for left handed. No, we didn't because we did this. If we know that's recessive, this is left handed. That's a very important thing, and I want to emphasize that again. So, we run into some problems with this. So, uh, let's say we have a situation where we have a test cross. So we have, um, let's say it's a bull, and uh, the bull is um, uh, dominant in both his alleles. So it's a longhorn bull, which is dominant, and he is red in color, and that, or let's say it's it, brown in color is dominant, okay? So he is a brown coated red. Uh, uh, he's, he's a long coated uh, brown co he's got a long brown coat right okay so he's got a long brown coat that's all we know about him because they're both dominant if we're told that those are both dominant features and you want to find out what what are the rest of these are is he homozygous or is he heterozygous for those traits well you don't know because all you see is the dominant traits in the phenotype. So what you've got to do is to do a test cross. And a test cross, the only way you're going to really find out uh, what he is, is by using a known. So 
a good noun would be a completely uh, heterozygous recessive. So one that's recessive for coat, color, and length. And that would be LLBB. And that's how we do a test cross. You always use a recessive for a test cross to find out um, the alleles in a dominant. Because that tells you what they are. So, um, if you have a situation where a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive or just a recessive in phenotype um, uh, get together well 100% of offspring in F1 are going to be this you don't really need to look at it you don't need to do a test you don't need to do any uh, opponent squares or anything like that you can tell right away this is the only thing that can be given from, from this guy and this is the only thing they'd be given from this person And that goes for if we added letters to these. Let's say it was A A B B and A A B B. It'd be the same thing. So uh, let's say we have. Uh, Uh, alleles on a chromosome. Well, that's, okay. And we have, uh, obviously we have the, the homologous chromosome will be nearby. And if there is crossing over, in other words, this part flops over here, well, then we'll see a change. Uh, so uh, you could see traits uh, like this trait is for eye color, this trait is for height, and this trait is for left handedness. So um, so just putting those in to remind myself. Um, this could change if there was crossing over, but no crossing over means that the, it will stay the same. And that's just what I want to talk about crossing over. Crossing over can change um, things. It is a source of genetic diversity. So, we talked about Red and white equals pink, that's incomplete dominance. Red and white getting together and making red. Now that's different. Red crossed with white. If that produces red, that is more like this. Which is complete dominance. So red times white equals red, that's complete dominance. If it's pink, it's incomplete dominance. For the pattern of inheritance, that's, you could be asked what, what is the pattern of inheritance. So, um, human gametes. So, um, our human uh, sex cells have uh, one sex chromosome And if it's from a male, it's an X. If it's from a female, it's a Y. Or if it's from a male, it's a uh, a Y. And if it's from a female, it's a. Uh, but anyway, it's got one set of sex chromosomes. 
uh, so x y for the male um, and we have 22 autosomes and that brings us to the haploid number which is 23 So, one, one set of sex chromosomes and 22 sets of autosomes. Um, not pairs, sets, okay? Because pairs is the total that a normal cell has, which is 46 chromosomes. So that's what a gamete has. Um, the carriers of an X-linked condition as you can see this is a female that is unaffected by color blindness um, that's a carrier and it's usually a heterozygous female there are no male carriers of excellent traits and also an important thing to note is that uh, a, a female with this is not a carrier that is an affected individual so uh, let's say we have fruit flies and red eyes are X-linked and uh, and white eyes is the uh, recessive condition so uh, it, we have here a homozygous female with white eyes okay so oh no we're given this if all of the offspring all of the offspring have white eyes Well, if all the offspring have white eyes, males and females, well, that tells us that the female is likely this. We're not told whether she is white-eyed or not. And the male is likely this. And that will give us all offspring of white eyes. So, if we're told that all the offspring um, have phenotypically red red eyes but that all of the females are carriers female are carriers well, that tells us that uh, the males are this. This is the male offspring. And the females are this. And there's only one way that could happen. And that is... In order for all the males to have this, females must be like this. And the male that gives his X chromosome to female offspring must be this guy. Because that is the only way you could have all are phenotypically red, but the females are carriers. Because everything that goes to the males 
from their mom is uh, big or and everything that goes to the females from their dad is smaller So, uh, phenotypically that dad is um, small or he is a white-eyed individual. So, um, uh, this is an argument that's gone on for centuries. We can now definitively say that the determiner of the gender of offspring is the father. They're the only ones that have the X and Y. The mom only gives an X. So the determination of the gender of offspring is uh, the father. Uh, and uh, color blindness. Why is color blindness more prevalent in uh, men than it is? Because men have one X, women have two, so they can be carriers. So that's an affected male and that's a carrier female. So uh, now talking about color blindness. Um, so the son of this relationship is color blind. And yet uh, his parents are normal for color vision. Well, that's the phenotype. It doesn't mean that the genotype is uh, all the way uh, both X ends. So what's going on here is the son got his Y chromosome from his father and he got this X chromosome, which is, she is a carrier female and she has given him this one. And that's why two normal uh, vision parents can uh, produce an offspring with colour blindness. So uh, normal vision colour blind, normal vision man, and he uh, mates with colour blind ma. So what we see in this situation is, because he is giving the Y to his sons, all sons are going to be colorblind. Because they're going to get their X chromosome from their mom and both the options are not good for color vision. And all daughters because they get one from their dad and one from their mom are going to be carriers. None of the daughters will be colorblind, but they will be carriers because they've got one normal uh, chromosome from their dad. So uh, X-linked codominant, this comes up. So we talked about codominance in lab uh, with blood types. Um, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes as well. But uh, codominance in cats uh, we see in coat color. So and coat color is X-linked in cats, and that's why you'll see uh, a litter of cats and all various different uh, colors combinations. And uh, sometimes it is uh, determined by what uh, gender the cats are, the kittens. So. Let's say uh, coat color in cats, cat coat color, and let's say we have XB is black, and XO 
is orange and guess what just like O in the uh, the blood example uh, there's also uh, uh, a condition where you get the two of these together uh, that is recessive so there's something that's recessive also um, and that's what's like the like the example that we blood there are two dominants and one recessive and uh, uh, in this situation what we get is an incomplete uh, an incomplete dominant uh, x-linked codominant but we also have um, a bit of incomplete dominance going on when we put these two together and that is what how we get a calico cat somewhere between orange and black and so we say what if the orange male was to get with the calico or a black female black furred female cat well we do the um, things with we'll the XP down here because that's all she's going to get and we get we get BXO calico females and we get so what we end up with are uh, one half calico females one half uh, black males and the other thing we would consider is we have zero orange so the question might be what proportion of them are going to be calico females? What proportion are going to be black males? What proportion of the cats are going to be orange? And we can answer that. So, uh, again, uh, let's do the same idea again. And this time we're going to uh, cross a, an orange male and a calico female. And... Uh, you'll see uh, that we end up with an even proportion of uh, all of them. So the orange female or the orange male will give us or this and the calico female gives us these options. And so you end up with, in this case, you get orange females orange males you get uh, calico female and you get a black male so you've got a combination of uh, four phenotypes in this situation So, uh, autosomal codominant, we see this with blood types. So, the four blood types possible are A, B, O, and AB. A and B are codominant. Uh, o is actually a recessive, so um, we have to think about what are the offspring combinations given a father and a mother's blood types so let's say we're given that the father is a well if we're just told that his blood type is a and we're not told it's heterozygous or homozygous or anything like that these are the possible uh, combinations he may be a a or he may be a o and the same with this guy he might be b b or he might be b o and this one we know is only OO 
and this one is only AB. So those are the combinations. And let's say we were told that uh, a male with type B, so the male can be BB or BO, and um, that they uh, mate with a female who is O. So, well, the combinations we can get are B or O. Uh, we cannot get A out of this because there is no A uh, mentioned at all. So, no type A. So, uh, pattern, patterns of inheritance. So this is the stuff that we're doing in class. Remember this? Some of you didn't like them too much. And let's say we have shading here. So, um, if this guy, his genotype is this, well then that tells us it's autosomal recessive. Now, if his genotype is this or this, then it's autosomal dominant, dominant. So that's the trait carrier, and uh, we're trying to figure out if the trait is recessive. If it's autosomal, it's going to be these letters, and this is autosomal dominant because it's got the big letter. And if we see a situation where we see a whole lot of this going on, males all the way around, um, and females with no problem. That tells us it's likely X-linked recessive. Because if it was X-linked dominant, which is also possible, you would see um, uh, females and males both displaying the same uh, the same thing same amount of uh, shading so excellent recessive was that last one and uh, just like we did in class make sure when you're doing those problems with the the squares and the circles work out the genotypes first because that'll tell you uh, what you're dealing with and it really is the only way to answer guessing it's a 50 50 or maybe if uh, maybe one in three chance of getting it right um, so uh, a problem on head right handedness and hemophilia um, will be on the test those are both um, as we know uh, handedness right is dominant and hemophilia is another one of those recessive traits that's why it's uh, uh, seen uh, often in, in groups that like the royals of Europe of old uh, they've bred together a little bit too much and uh, with that narrow gene pool you start to see recessive traits like hemophilia coming out um, so that will be a problem and um, And also, uh, um, just know your incomplete dominance, complete dominance, uh, X-linked, um, and uh, co-dominant, and uh, what they all mean. And uh, all I'd say is uh, that's all I got for you. So thank you and good luck.